As the first decade of the 20th century progressed, discontent with the government of Porfirio Diaz began to spread throughout the country. During his time in office, key principles such as social justice and the exercise of democracy had been ignored. The Mexican Revolution. In 1908, Porfirio Diaz announced that he would retire from power at the end of his term because he believed that Mexico was ready for democracy. This statement unleashed a political fervor throughout the country. In his book, The Presidential Succession in 1910, Francisco I. Madero set forth the need for a peaceful and democratic change. In 1909, he began to travel around the country, spreading a message that took root in the civic consciousness of the Mexican people. Effective suffrage, no re-election. As Madero's popularity increased, the government had him arrested. He was still in prison when the presidential elections were held and Porfirio Diaz was elected for the seventh time. Madero was able to escape and he issued the plan of San Luis, calling the election null and void and urging the people to take up arms for the cause of democracy. The revolution erupted on November 20th, 1910. Peasants, laborers, miners, intellectuals, and the middle class joined the fight. When the revolutionary forces occupied Ciudad Juarez, the government was forced to sign a peace treaty. Porfirio Diaz resigned the presidency and went into exile. Madero made his triumphal entry into Mexico City. However, as the victor, he did not simply take over as president. He waited for new elections so that he could legitimately claim the presidency through the will of the citizens. But Mexico continued to experience very difficult times, economically, socially, and politically. In Morelos, Zapata's followers believed that Madero didn't support their struggle for land, and they issued the Plan Abayala against him. To the north, Pascual Orozco rose up in arms to defend the people's demands. Meanwhile, prominent members of the old regime organized the overthrow of Madero's government. President Madero put General Victoriano Huerta in charge of defending his government, but Huerta entered into negotiations with the opposing group and supported the coup d'etat. Madero was forced to resign and Huerta assumed the presidency. The ten tragic days ended with the death of Madero. Venustiano Carranza, the governor of Coahuila, repudiated Huerta and issued the plan of Guadalupe in order to restore constitutional order. The country became a battlefield on which the constitutionalists fought the federal army. After more than a year of intense fighting, the constitutionalists forced Huerta to resign. But the revolutionaries' victory did not solve the nation's enormous problems of democracy, social justice, land ownership, jobs, and education. The followers of Carranza, Villa, and Zapata all wanted to be the ones to decide the country's course. As they were not able to come to an agreement, the revolution split into various factions. At the Aguascalientes Convention, the followers of Villa and Zapata imposed their views, which focused more on social policy. The convention declared itself sovereign and repudiated Carranza. Carranza moved his government to Veracruz and, starting in 1915 and supported by Obregón's troops, began an intense military campaign against Villa and Zapata. With the military situation going his way, Carranza calls on Congress to draft a new constitution. It was adopted on February 5, 1917. Although different factions continued to vie for power, the Constitution opened the way for the country in the years following the revolution by including the principles for which the country had fought. Democracy, education, agrarian reform, and labor rights. Bicentennial of Independence. Centennial of the Mexican Revolution. The Mexican Government.